So, today is September 24th. I'm kind of waiting here for the lawn to dry up a little bit to go do a little bit of lawn mowing. So, I figured I'd take a little bit of time here and do a little channel update video. Um, yeah, so there hasn't been very many YouTube videos this year. Um, there's a couple reasons why. This year has just kind of been a crazy year from the start of the year all the way till currently. And it's probably not going to get any better the rest of the year. And, uh, yeah, we'll see how next spring goes. Um, but let's start out with reason number one. I've been busy. Like, I have doubled, actually I've tripled I've tripled the amount of money I made this year, which means I've tripled the amount of work I've done too, which also means that I haven't had as much time to edit videos. And uh, you guys see, and I picked up the new snowblower for this thing. We got that installed. Got this mechanical self-loving loader, which I definitely love. Um, don't get the regular loader. The mechanical self-loving loader is so much better. Um, been mowing up a storm. Been doing some larger property management jobs. I'm actually bidding on a large contract. I've bid on a couple larger contracts um, to the point where um, one of the contracts I'm bidding on, I need an LLC. I need liability insurance. They don't want just somebody doing it on the side, which I understand because it's this is a big contract and uh, so I'm in the process of starting an LLC. I don't need it right now yet. I don't plan on starting it to the first of the year, but I have been going through and discussing with a CPA, getting a logo made, uh, working on creating invoices trying to do the paperwork side of it, trying to get everything, all my ducks in a row, so once it's started, everything goes smoothly. Um, making a nice Excel sheet, Excel sheet to take care of uh, expenses and all that, on top of the number of lawn mowings and stuff like that, and quoting snow removal jobs and uh, equipment maintenance, which I just posted on my Instagram today that this thing does need some maintenance done to it here, but it's got a little bit of dirt work to do yet. It's got some spraying and aeration to do yet. And then it's coming in the shop to have some maintenance done on it. It needs oils changed. It needs a hydraulic line replaced. It needs some wiring taken care of. It needs the cab put on for winter. It needs the heater hooked up this year. And we'll get into reasons for all that stuff. But uh, this thing's been running flawlessly. There is a little bit of wiring cleanup I'd like to do on here that I didn't ever get to last year, but that can wait yet. Um, Right now, the current maintenance thing I'm hoping to work on today is our side-by-side. Uh, -side. We picked up the spring. We're going up north here in a few weeks, and uh, I want a wiper because it does have a glass windshield, so that's the wiper kit for it. We put a rear bumper on it. Um, here's some soft doors for winter. Them are probably not going on until we get back unless it's going to be really cold out. But... All that stuff has taken drastic amount of time that I would normally have for editing videos. Um, I have a couple of videos recorded, as you can see the GoPro sitting right here. But uh, the real-time lawn mowing videos, no one really seems to watch. They maybe get 50, 60 views. So it just doesn't really pay to do them. And I would kind of like to do some more in-depth videos. I just haven't had the time. I'm hoping and that was a perfect example I just got a phone call so I don't remember where I was um, yeah so anyways that's uh, eating up a lot of time and then the other side of it was uh, it's been a fun interesting year for me medically wise um, if you're not following me on Instagram, you should really follow me on Instagram. Go create an Instagram 
and follow master dot of dot everything it's linked down below in every one of my videos you'll be a lot more up to date than what you will be on youtube i post little short clips multiple times a week um stuff on that so let's get into this a little bit um i started out in january started having stomach aches and uh every time i'd eat i'd feel like shit I tried eating small meals, I tried breaking my meals up throughout the day, and this went on for about two weeks. Everything I ate, well, I'm like, well, it's not a stomach flu, because that was my first thought. I'm like, oh, it's just a stomach flu. I feel like shit every time I eat or just had a stomach ache, you know, eh, it's just a stomach flu. Well, we went on about two weeks, and I went to the doctor. Well, the first thing they always think it is, is acid reflux. I'll put on medication for acid reflux. That didn't help. Put on a different medication for acid reflux. That didn't help. Still having stomach aches. By this point, I'm starting to not eat very well. I had, I was in the middle of lawn rolling, and uh, I felt like shit every time I ate, so I just was waiting until later in the day to eat, like after I got everything done for the day. Um, Kept going, kept going, so then they, well, let's let's take a look. Let's go down your throat and check your esophagus, check your stomach, check the beginning of your small intestines, make, check for acid reflexes and that. Well, there's no acid reflux. Well, okay, duh. So what's going on here? So I, uh, we're talking to the doctor, and she's kind of asking me questions and that. How stomach it feels, blah, blah, blah. And I forgot what she asked me, but I'm just sitting there thinking, I'm like, you know, I go to her, I go, every time I eat, it can be seven hours later, and I'm still burping up what I ate, which to me doesn't seem right because in health class, I thought it was like a couple hours for food to be out of your, out of your stomach. In order to be burping it up, it's still got to be in your stomach, right? And she's like, yeah. So they did what's called a uh, gastric emptying test, which is a very interesting test. Um, go to the hospital and they have, they make you scrambled eggs, toast, and jello, jelly. And uh, the eggs are traced, are laced with a radioactive tracer. So you eat radioactive eggs. And then you lay underneath a scanner and it scans your stomach every couple minutes or every so often and sees how fast that empties out of your stomach. Well, everything should be completely out of your stomach at about four hours. Mine turned out to be that everything would be completely out of my stomach at like seven hours, which explains the burping. Um, so, okay, so we figured out what it was. Then I went to see a GI doctor. The GI doctor's like, well, it could be this causing that. It could be this causing that. It could be this causing that. So I had a bunch of other tests done, lab work done. Had a, another test done where you go to the hospital and they give you an injection of radioactive tracer and blah, 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 and see how your gallbladder reacts to check your gallbladder function, all this shit. I've had over 20 doctor's appointments this year. And uh, it eventually got to the point where um, she referred me to a larger facility, UW uh, uh, Freighter, sorry, Freighter here in Wisconsin. Uh, Freighter Medical College in Milwaukee. Well, they're four months out. This whole time I'm losing weight. Like I'm dropping weight left and right. Every week I'm losing more and more weight. And they keep trying different medication and it's, oh well, try this medication, see you in four weeks. Try this medication, see you in four weeks. So eventually when she referred me, she goes, well, I, I don't know what else to tell you. I'll refer you to UW Freighter. And well, I'm like, okay. So I'll find out that it's four months that I would we waiting to get in as soon as I could get in. And that was urgent. Um, so I'm like, okay, whatever. So I went to a different GI doctor. She uh, 
she tried a different medication, two other medications, and uh, she referred me to UW Madison. Well, UW Madison's six months to get in. So that's not gonna work when I'm losing weight every week. And I'm talking with her and she's like, well, let's run this blood test and see how your lab results do and maybe I can get you admitted to the hospital. She goes, I, I would like to get something to get your nutrition back up. It's like, no, we think I'm, at this point I'm down almost 20% of my body weight I've lost. Um, so all my lab results come back fine because, well, I've seen a, God dang it. I got another phone call, hang on. Yeah, this is how my days go apparently. So I believe, okay, I think I know where I was. If, I'm, if I jumped around on this, I'm sorry. This has just kind of been how my days have gone. Um, so, fucking Christ almighty. Uh, so in the meantime, I also seen a dietitianist. I've tried, oh, try a liquid diet. Try this kind of diet. Try eating several small meals throughout the day, trying to all do the stuff to help the stomach. Not get a stomachache every time you eat and nothing's working. I'm getting frustrated. I'm annoyed. I'm doing what the dietitian said, taking a multivitamin, drinking insurers, blah, 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 blah. Trying to drink liquids more than solids and all this shit. And well, doing all that stuff and taking a multivitamin and all that stuff, all my lab results came back fine for like minerals and vitamins and stuff that she was hoping she would, one of them would be real low that she could admit me to the hospital for that, but it didn't happen. And so she's like, well, I know it's going to take, I know you're six months out for UW Madison. And I'm like, yeah, like something needs to get done. I'm like, this is way too much weight to lose. And she's like, oh, I would like to do something, but there's nothing I can do. And she goes, she goes, well, try going with your primary, uh, primary care doctor, which in the meantime, I scheduled an appointment with her just trying to find some way to get something done because like the weight loss was getting serious. I was freezing. I felt like shit. I had zero energy, just beat down, wore out mentally, physically, all this shit. Um, and I talked to her. And she goes, well, she goes, well, I'd like to put a feeding tube in you, which, okay. Like, obviously this ain't helping, something needs to get done, so I don't care at this point. But she goes, I've never ordered one. So she had to talk with a couple other doctors who a doctor referred me to a surgeon. This surgeon took a look at, I went to this appointment to talk to the surgeon. She looked at me and goes, well, as malnutritious as you are, I don't feel comfortable putting a feeding tube in you. So they talked about maybe doing TPN, which is nutrition through an IV and blah, 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 blah. So she referred me to a different doctor. This doctor looked at me and he goes, oh, well, let me go talk to this other doctor. We'll see what we can come up with. And we got referred to a different surgeon. And uh, the interesting thing was, is this surgeon goes, oh yeah, I'll, I'll put, I'll put a feeding tube in you, and I go, well, so-and-so doctor said uh, she wouldn't feel comfortable putting a feeding tube in me right now because I'm so malnutrition. And the doctor goes, was this doctor so-and-so? And I'm like, yeah. And he goes, yeah. The reason why she doesn't want to do that is the patient she had that she had issues with, there was a mistake made, and I'm like, oh, and he goes, I've been doing this for 20 or 30 some years, whatever he said. And he goes, I know exactly what mistake was made. He knew my apprehension. I, I do not like surgeries. I've had six surgeries in the past and had bad experiences with them. And I absolutely hate surgeries. Um, so he knew my apprehension I had with it and this and that. And uh, it was pretty awesome. He like, I had this done. September 2nd, I had a feeding tube placed. Um, the surgeon that placed it, which September 2nd was a Friday, it was a holiday weekend, he knew my apprehension, knew I was nervous about it. He go, I go, we talked about different types of feeding tubes, and oh my God, there's so many different types of feeding tubes that I've done in my research, and I've looked this shit up too, and 
you got ng tubes, nj tubes, g tubes, j tubes, peg g, peg j, peg peg g or uh, jet j, and all this other shit. But uh, I can't do any of the g tubes because that would go into my stomach and I'd have the same issue I have now with the stomach aches. So it had to be a j tube which goes into the duodenum, which is part of your small intestine. So it basically bypasses my stomach right now. But anyways, he knew I was pretty nervous about this and that, and he uh, actually had his personal cell phone number. If I had any problems, he goes, call me, I'll even come to your house if I have to. I'm like, holy shit, that's a fucking doctor right there. How many doctors nowadays pull that shit? Um, but uh, anyways, so it's been, what, 21 days since September 2nd? And uh, yeah, so... It's all covered up, so don't worry too much about it. There's some gauze over top of it right now. It goes through my skin into my small intestine. I have this taped up weird because there's got stitches in here that are hopefully coming out next week, and by taping it this way, it's not pulling in the stitches, but there you go. That goes down. Um, one second. get my shirt untangled. Um, do a backpack. And I might need two hands for this. We'll see. Zoom in a little bit in here. Give me one second. So we started with one way of feeding and then didn't work out the best. So in here, I have a pump and a bag for a formula. This will last me about 15 hours. Um, we tried doing it um, with a gravity bag. That didn't work. I was having not stomach aches, but like intestinal cramping. So we ended up having to use a pump. And uh, for right now, we just have it going real slow and continuously all day, which means I have to carry a backpack with me with this thing in it. And I need two hands, um, which is connected to me and going into my intestines all day real slow. It's like 75 milliliters an hour, which is like uh, 30 some milliliters is an ounce. So like two ounces an hour or something like that. It's not too bad. It hasn't really stopped me from doing anything, but uh, yeah, the only thing that stopped me from doing anything is where that goes in is the first two or three weeks was awfully tender. Like your abdomen, your abs, um, because they, pretty much make a hole through your ab muscles into your intestines and that like walking in uneven grass when you'd step weird and you you know tighten up your ab muscles to kind of catch your balance or your core muscles that hurt a little bit but uh we're getting much better with it now and uh it's starting to heal i actually see the surgeon next week to uh have him look at that um but i did see my uh doctor that's taking care of the pump and the feed and all that shit and I've learned so much this year with this whole medical issue, um, but uh, what I actually have is called gastroparesis. So the stomach doesn't empty the way it's supposed to. Um, but by the time I had a feeding tube placed, I lost 25% of my body weight. I went from being 18% body fat down to less than 5% body fat. I was almost in the double digits for weights. I was almost below 100 pounds. Um, it's been 21 days. I've gained seven pounds back already. I have a lot more energy again. Still a little cold all the time, but hopefully it has I like, gain weight back here. Um, it was bad. I could see muscles. I could see every rib in my body. It, it got really bad by the time I had a feeding tube place. So I am more than thankful for the feeding tube but uh like i said if you follow me on instagram you'll see it hasn't stopped me from anything uh last weekend i was running this thing leveling out dirt i hooked my backpack over here had the line draped down i've been mowing i mowed lawn four days after surgery and uh the surgery took an hour and a half so it's not like it was just a quick little thing it was actually a laparoscopic surgery um to place that feeding tube because it goes into the small intestine but 
the tube I actually have is a J tube. Um, there's some information for you if you want to know. If you didn't want to know it, whatever. Hopefully you found this video interesting, but just kind of give you an update and explain why there hasn't been very many videos this year. But uh, there should be more coming. Um, like I said, starting to feel better. As we come here to the fall, I'll be slowing down a little bit um, before we get into snow. There'll be some, hopefully some decent snow removal videos going. We need to get the cab on this thing. Get the heater hooked up so I'm not freezing this year, even though it wasn't too bad, but I've been cold through this whole crap because I lost just so much body fat. But things are looking up now. I didn't really talk about this too much at first, but once I knew I was getting a feeding tube, I figured can't really uh, hide it forever. So there you go. There's one. It is what it is. You just take life day by day and uh, take it for what it is. And uh, yeah, like I said, you just look at the plus sides. I'm gaining weight. That is pretty much all that matters to me at this point right now. And that's pretty much all I care about. Um, so hopefully, let me sit down here. Hopefully over time, the stomach will start functioning again the way it's supposed to. Uh, the doctor that's taking care of this said that a uh, number of cases he's seen once you get the weight back up and the weight under control, the stomach just starts working again. A lot of times they have no idea what causes it, what didn't cause it, this and that. Oh, we'll back up here a little bit too. Before the December, to December 2nd, um, kind of dicking around with this, dicking around with this, and these doctors are just like, oh, well, try this test, try this test. Well, all these tests, you know, and none of these places want to get you in, so it's three, four weeks, three, four weeks, three, four weeks, three, four weeks, and your whole time you're losing weight, and you're... I got so frustrated that I just went to the fucking ER one night. I'm like, what can you guys do? Like, I didn't really care at that point. I was just like, I can't keep losing weight. Like, something needs to get done. And, uh, well, the ER doctor couldn't do very much. He goes, I don't know. His straight words were me is, I don't know why they're dicking around with this. Something needs to get done. He goes, there's not too much I can do because this has been going on for so long. It's not like it's all sudden, and, you know, ER doctors, there's only so much they can do. He goes, I am gonna put a note in to your doctor, um, make sure this gets resolved, let him know you were here. And uh, I don't know what that ER doctor put in that report, but the doctor I was seeing was actually on vacation in Michigan. He called me at 7.55 in the morning and said, uh, hey, you were at the ER? I'm like, yeah, because I go, son, he's get done with this. And he goes, I, I agree. He goes, well, did you schedule that test that I wanted you to do? He wanted one, he wanted one other test done to check the veins and nerves around the stomach before he uh, said, sure, we're putting a feeding tube in just because he goes, if there's a problem with that, even if I put a feeding tube in, you're going to have issues. So he goes, let's just check that first. I go, yeah, that test is out three weeks. He goes, that's bullshit. He goes, let me give you a call back. I go to him, I go, well, am I going to hear back from you before noon? He goes, yeah. I Because I'm like, I was just to the point where I was so frustrated and like just done with this shit. And he goes, yeah, you'll hear back from me by noon. I'm like, okay. And like, I'm not shitting you within 15 minutes. He calls me back. He goes, uh, the hospital will be calling you any second. He goes, they're going to try to squeeze you in today. I'm like, okay, perfect. So a test that was scheduled for three weeks out, the hospital calls me and goes, hey, why don't you come in any time today and get this test done? Don't even make a point, we'll fit you in anywhere. I'm like, okay. That was like a 15 minute test. Uh, that was like a CT scan type setup, but uh, I'm like, okay. So that was done. And then he called me back on Sunday when he got the results. This is a doctor, you know, he's on vacation. He called me back on Sunday when he got the results. And him and the uh, surgeon were talking already before this. And the surgeon was also on vacation. 
so these two doctors like are awesome because they finally realize that hey shit needs to get fucking done so within a week after that i had a appointment scheduled and everything and was in surgery getting the feeding tube placed so it, it it's been a crazy crazy fucking year um but there's uh why there hasn't been very many youtube videos there's a little update hope you guys find it interesting like i said if this is all news to you and you haven't found any of this out till now I really highly recommend you to follow my Instagram and uh, you'll be a lot more up to date. There's link is once again down below in the description or you can follow me at master.of.everything on Instagram. Um, the profile picture is the 648R and the stand down in the same profile picture. Sorry, the 648R and the 1025R on the uh, profile picture. So yeah, there's a little update on me and uh the equipment and uh how my year's been going but uh i'm excited i'm gaining weight which is awesome a plus like he said it's probably gonna take a while to gain the weight all back that i lost but seven pounds is a start he goes that's probably gonna slow down here most of that was just getting your body rehydrated and all this but um yeah i'm excited to be actually starting a business that's going to be legit with liability insurance and all this stuff. I said, just doing this on the side. I'm excited to get these couple big contracts. I'm excited for all this stuff. So there'll be more videos coming. And uh, yeah, welcome to my crazy year. Hope you guys found this video interesting. If you uh, like this, give it a thumbs up. It does help a lot. It, uh, it helps with analytics. It helps with this channel. Especially seeing I haven't posted very many videos this year. YouTube probably is mad at me and I'm probably in like YouTube jail or something. And uh, the algorithm probably hates me. But hey, comment the heck out of this video. Like it, comment, blah, 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 blah. Normal YouTube stuff. Um, and if you want to see videos of this thing, there's a couple out there. There'll be a couple more coming. And if you want to see that brand new heavy duty John Deere front three point snowblower this fall. Make sure to subscribe because she's coming and she's a monster. I have it. It's installed. I got to get that on. Got to get my cab back on. And this thing is going to be one wicked snow removal machine this year. Plus, I also have a, uh, I have a, da -da -da -da, what's the word? I have a box blade for back here too. So, uh, yeah. I am looking for that 60-inch uh, heavy-duty broom too. So, if anybody's got a spot on that green... It needs to be the green one, the green 60-inch heavy-duty broom for the, uh, uh, what are they called, front front mount commercial lawnmowers, like what golf courses and schools use, counties use. If anybody's got a spot on a broom for that, let me know, because that I can convert to fit on this front three-point hitch. So, yeah. Once again, you guys all have a great day. There's why I haven't been doing very many videos. And, uh... I'm going to maybe try to shoot a review video of this thing quick. And, uh, yeah. Once I get the snowboard and that on, we'll do a read, uh, what, six, five, six review of the 1025R. Seeing my uh, three year or two review is pretty popular. But, there you go. I said but like how many times now. So, and my phone hasn't ring for a while. It's going to ring any second now, isn't it? You guys have a good day. See ya.